Hi, I'm Anthony and this is Bob Barker and today we're going to be showing you how to make this shop cart. So let's get started. The main reason why I wanted this shop cart is I did need a little extra storage, especially for uh, my compressor, but I needed an additional work surface that's not as big as my workbench for uh, projects that don't need it, that much space. And I do want to mention I should be wearing a mask for doing all these cuts, which I do do now in my current projects. You just want to keep all that dust out of your lungs. And so after we get the big pieces broken down with the circular saw, we go over to the table saw. I like to add some rabbits to the sides of my cabinet box and I'm also going to be using a dado cut here as well. Of course that's not absolutely necessary. You could always just do butt joints and with pocket hole screws or even screws from the other side of the plywood. Uh, but I just kind of prefer it this way for my projects. And while we're at it we'll get some additional pieces cut uh, including our supports and uh, some of the other odds and ends that we're going to be using on the build. Now most of this I'm just using 3 quarter inch plywood, but uh, for some of the, the trim I'm going to use um, some poplar boards that I got at just my local uh, box store. Uh, kind of the color roughly matches it, so it kind of blends pretty well. So we're just getting all that chopped down and ready for assembly. The more projects I do, the more I'm happy that I got these uh, positioning squares. It, they really do come in handy. And if you're interested in any of the tools and supplies that I use, I do have affiliate links down below, so you can check that in the description. So I'm getting this wall here put into place. It's a little bit of a snug fit, so I kind of do a little uh, persuading with my mallet and some clamps, but then I get it into place, and then we can use those positioning squares afterwards to hold it uh, 90 degrees uh, while the glue dries up. And I do like to use the clamps just for a little extra support to make sure my joint is nice and tight. So for on this side, we're using the rabbit uh, like I do on most of my cabinets there to get them into place. But since we're going to be tr uh, doing some trim on this one, uh, this part won't be visible because it's going to be covered for the trim. So I'm adding some screws just for a little extra strength on the outside. And then we move on to getting the supports to finish up the basic uh, cabinet box here. And of course, we're going to be using some pocket sc hole screws on those. So I just ran through the pieces that I need. And then I get that into place and I always use the clamps just so it doesn't uh, move on me like the pocket holes uh, tend to like to do. And if you're wondering why I decided to climb on top of my table instead of just moving this to the floor, it's because my floor is terrible. So there's just so many kind of waves and unevenness to the floor that it's kind of nice just to get up on top of the workbench and have a nice flat working surface when I'm assembling the cabinet boxes. And after I get the main supports in, I like to drive a few screws in from that top support into the back one just to keep everything nice and secured together. And I initially wasn't sure how I was going to mount this uh, shelf, but then I figured I got these positioning squares, might as well try it. And it actually worked out really well. I held it right where I needed it in place and at a good 90 degree angle. So I just kind of clamp that down with those squares and with additional clamps and then I can use the pocket holes to screw it in. Now you could just put a dado and it'd be a little little easier to get it, get it right in place, but this worked pretty well for me. So with that part of it in place, I moved on to putting the back of the cabinet box. And so I just kind of get that into place and clamp it down. And I'm taking advantage of the fact that we're gonna be doing trim so then I can just straight screw it in um, all around the edges where the trim is gonna hide it. So I did countersink um, all of the screws that way it doesn't interfere with the trim sitting in there and then after I get all those edges done I measure where my uh, shelf is that way I can screw the back end into the shelf to give it some extra support uh, from here as well and even though I already screwed the shelf into place uh, to the back panel I just added some pocket hole screws because hey I like to overdo things sometimes so after I got that done, I'm adding some extra pieces here on the bottom. And the whole point of this, it just gives me a little bit of an extra surface that I'm going to be able to put my casters into. And it also helps when I'm going to be installing the bottom trim because of the thickness I want to use on that trim. It just gives it a nice flat surface to attach to. And speaking of the trim, time to cut it down with my miter station. This is actually before I finished doing all of my dust collection, but it was still a joy to use this miter station on these projects. So next up, some more pocket holes. We're gonna be just making a corner trim here. So I'm gonna put two pieces together and 
Bob Barker is making sure that no cats in the neighborhood come and disturb our work. And once he's satisfied it's safe, he lets me know that it's okay for me to continue. And for these pieces, I'm just I'm gonna glue them and then do the pocket hole screws just to make a corner joint. And the way I'm mounting them, those pocket holes will be completely covered, all except for one piece that's gonna go uh, on the front of the shelf there. But for that one, you could always just put in some plugs or you can even just fill it in with some wood filler and it kind of smooths it out and makes it look nicer. So after we have all four of those ready, it's time to put them onto the cabinet. And I'm just gonna use some glue and some brad nails to get these in place. And later on, I will come back uh, with some wood filler and go over all those little holes from the brad nails just to kind of smooth out the look and make it a little nicer. So now as I'm chugging away here, I did make a bit of a mistake. Most of the pieces that I'm nailing into are really thick except for that piece right there. That one is just the single piece of the plywood and not like uh, butting into the next one. So it did go through the edge just barely. So I used this screwdriver just to kind of bend down and embed the tip of that brad nail just into the wood so it's below the surface. And once that was there, I just went with some uh, wood filler, filled that in and then sanded it down. And afterwards you can't really tell but I should have just used just slightly uh, shorter bread nails for that part right there if I would have remembered that that part wasn't as thick. So moving on to some of the other trim. Um, now for these ones, I decided just to put each one on individually. It just turned out to be a little bit easier for this particular one, especially because of those side pieces that I made into that L shape. Um, so I just kind of cut them all down individually to size and then glued and nailed them into place. And just like the other ones, I will fill in those nails later. And as we're going around the cabinet box adding this trim, you can see that we're covering up all the places where we had the extra screws in earlier. So now it looks just much more uh, clean and streamlined. So next for the top, I put a whole bunch of glue, spread that all around and laminate these two pieces together. So I'll make the top of my shop cart here inch and a half. So it'd be nice and thick and sturdy. And I just gotten used to doing this method where I basically just kind of screw them together until it dries and it's been working out great for me so I keep on doing that. And I do like to make one of the pieces a slightly oversized so once I get them joined together I can come back with my trim router and a flush trim bit and then just get them perfectly squared up with each other. So I also need to get the cabinet box ready for the installation so I'm going to be using those uh, top support pieces but I also add some pocket hole screws. And for the top edges of the top surface, we're gonna be adding some of the poplar trim here, just like I have in most of the other shop furniture, just kind of goes with the look of everything else and protects those edges from getting too beat up. Um, so I don't like to measure, I just, on these ones, I always just put it onto the piece itself and just kind of mark where it needs to be. That gets me much nicer uh, cuts and a good fit. So with that, we'll kind of glue and nail all these together and finish them up just like we're doing the rest of the cart. Now before we put the top on, we do want to finish up these shelves. So I have one more of those supports that I'm going to glue and nail in place. And then after that, just for extra support, I put this little piece underneath the edge of that shelf just to make sure it's kind of supported on all four edges. And now that it's in place, you'll never even be able to see it. And the whole point of these shelves is I wanted something that was just a good, quick, easy access from the outside without having to open up drawers or cabinet doors. And I'm mainly going to be putting in uh, like my wood glue and other kind of finishing things that's just something that I can just easily grab. So, and I want to make sure that they're not going to fall over or fall out as I'm moving things around. So I'm putting these extra trim around it just to kind of help box them in. And for the side pieces of the trim here, I decided I'm just going to go ahead and do some pocket holes. It's really not necessary because it fits nice and snug. And once you get the glue in there and the other brad nails, it's never really going to move. But like I said, I like to slightly overdo it and make sure it's totally secure. And since we're just doing one on each side on the inside here, you can never even see these. So they remain hidden and keep the look nice. And so as I'm putting this one in, doing the same process, is uh, I did on the bottom one up until this point where I go to do my pocket holes and realize, oh, forgot to make pocket holes. But like I said, that thing's never going to move. So I ended up leaving it off since it was already glued in and uh, nailed into place, but it still kind of bugs me till this day. So next up was some sanding just to kind of get everything, all the trim nice and flush. I got that done and then Bob Barker is inspecting the work 
to make sure it's all up to his standards and then we're going to get ahead and put on the casters don't ask me why i initially started to do this on the side i just apparently like to make things a little difficult on myself at times but after i started doing that i realized hey i can put it upside down and it's way easier except for then i almost smacked the wife's car which uh, i got lucky i didn't because i could have ran into some problems with that one so now that we're a safe distance from her car, we can get back to putting on the casters. And for this one, I'm just putting uh, one on each corner. And those are locking casters so I can lock it in place if I need to or just roll it around and it's nice and mobile for me. And next up, I'm gonna be putting on the top here. So we just kind of slide it in place, make sure it's where we want it. And then we can use those pocket holes that we did before and then also just screw it in through the supports that from the cabinet box itself. And so that finishes up the cabinet box, but now I do want to put a drawer in on top so it's back to the table saw to get some of my pieces cut out. And so once we get those uh, roughly how we need them, we go to finish them up on the miter saw. And since I kind of want to maximize the space, this isn't going to be too deep of a drawer. Um, I'm going to be putting in some rabbits on the bottom uh, to keep that as much storage as possible without having wasted space. And in the background, the wife is riling up my shop supervisor there. But uh, with both of them present, I gotta make sure I'm on best behavior. So with that, we have the sides done. I just still need to cut out the bottom piece here. So Bob Barker wanted to make sure that this was acceptable wood, so he is testing it out thoroughly for me and supervising my cuts. Next up is more pocket holes that we're gonna be using to assemble the drawer. Now, there's a million different ways you can do it, but this is one of the ones that I tend to gravitate towards a lot. So we just go ahead and glue up our joints and then we get them clamped into place and then we can just secure them with the screws. Do that on both sides and then after that I test the bottom piece make sure that it's still nice and square and after that once we're happy we'll go ahead and just mark out our lines uh, for where we're going to be doing our pre-drilled uh, countersink holes then we can come on and uh, do some screws after that. But uh, pro tip, you probably want to be careful and not stab yourself in the thumb with your driver, which I did there. And then I started laughing when I reviewed the footage because apparently I was still aware that the camera was rolling, so the only word I said was fudge. So a quick band-aid just to make sure I didn't kind of bleed all over my project and I could uh, add the drawer slides. So I'm using these uh, Craig jigs. And I do show these steps in more detail in my miter station build, so I'll leave a link if you're interested in that. But on one side, I was able to mount the slide flush, but on the other, there was a bit of a lip because of the face frame, so I had to cut down the shim with a scrap piece of wood. So then I just uh, screwed that to the cabinet box, and then after that, I was able to mount the slide. So entering the home stretch here, we test out the drawer just to make sure it works nice and it slides pretty good. And then we can move on to doing the cabinet doors, and I do like to cut these out of a single piece of wood just so it has kind of a continuous grain look and I did do that with the uh, drawer face as well. So after we got these cut out then we can just use this other jig to get ready for the concealed hinge hardware and it makes it just nice and simple to get that prepared. And then I get the hardware in and then after that I measure out my spots on my face frame so we can mount the drawers and I'm making sure I do that first before I put in the face on the drawer. And the nice thing with these uh, hinges is there's a lot of adjustability, so you got a fair amount of wiggle room to make sure that you get your gaps uh, right where you want it and it looks uh, pretty nice and even all around. I'm using some shims on top of the cabinet doors just to get the spacing right for the drawer face. And we're temporarily screwing it into place and now I'm fully securing it and then we can remove those temporary screws and then drill all the way through and start to install our hardware. That just tends to be my go-to method for doing this because it's just so nice and simple and it keeps um, the drawer face where you need it and it kind of helps you get your spacing uh, pretty, pretty good. And for this, I always try to make sure that I remember to put the backer piece so I don't get blow out because you will see the inside of those cabinet uh, doors when you open them up. So you want to keep it nice and smooth. So I just kind of clamp some extra pieces of wood and just this homemade jig that I have just to get my spacing right for the cabinet door pulls. So we got the all drilled out and we can get those on and 
realistically, you could be done right here. Um, you don't really have to do a finish on it, but for this one, I decided I just wanted to put a Danish oil uh, finish on this one and kind of see how I liked it. And since I made this, I have been using it uh, for a few projects in the shop, and it does make it a lot easier to clean up uh, glue spills and things like that because it doesn't really stick to that finish. So just the final assembly here and we're done. And if you do like the project that we're doing and the videos that we're putting out, it'd be a great help if you uh, like, subscribe, or just leave us, leave us comments of what you think about it down below. All right, and that's it for today. Now we do have some detailed plans available. Uh, check the description below uh, in case you're interested in making this for yourself. Otherwise, we'll, we'll see you guys in the next one.